Julia Newcomb, the founder of So You've Been Dumped.com. Over the last 11 years, I've seen just about every type of dumping story you could possibly imagine. Countless posts have been written about whether it's better to be cruelly dumped or to be let down gently. Regardless of the way it ends, some amount of pain is inevitable. Here are my five tips to dumping your relationship. Tip number one, end it in person, if you can. One SYBD poll showed that just 45% of those dumpies surveyed were dumped in person. If you need to end a relationship, whenever possible, sit the person down face-to-face -face and explain your reasons for leaving. Okay, in some cases, you may live far away or schedules won't allow. So in these situations, other forms of communication might be necessary, but if possible, try to do it face-to-face. -face. If not, then at least aim for ending it over the phone and not via email or text. Tip number two, choose your location wisely. End it somewhere neutral and preferably in private, someplace you won't be disturbed and will be able to answer any questions your ex-partner may have. Personally, I recommend the living room or lounge over, say, the bathtub or in bed. If you do opt to end it in public, some places to avoid are any kind of party, restaurants, on buses, trains, or planes. Choose instead to go for a walk in a park or along the coast at a lake or, again, just somewhere neutral. Tip number three, pick your time carefully. Okay, there's arguably never a good time to dump someone, but there are certainly less evil ones. If you can, do your best to avoid breaking up on their birthday, in the middle of a vacation, on a holiday, just before or during their exams, or at some other important time in their life. One of our members was dumped on Valentine's Day, just a few hours after her grandfather's funeral. Another guy was dumped just before he walked into his three-hour PhD verbal exam. And still another was dumped on her birthday at dinner on the first night of a seven-day cruise. Tip number four, answer the questions. Whenever we get dumped, it sets off a barrage of questions. What did I do wrong? What could I have done different? Is there someone else? Whatever the case may be. So be prepared, as much as you can be, to know why you're ending the relationship, what was and wasn't working, and so forth. If you fell out of love, say so. If you fell for someone new, say so. A lot of people have a tendency to lie when they've met someone new in order to try to spare their ex's feelings. If there is someone else, it's best to break the news yourself. They'll only find out eventually anyway, and it should come from you, rather than bumping into the two of you or hearing through the grapevine. Tell the truth and assist your ex with achieving the closure that he or she will need in order to move on. Tip number five, be firm. Kill the hope and don't imply that this is a temporary thing or that you might just feel different in time. Nope. Don't keep the ex lined up just in case you change your mind or that new job or playmate or what have you doesn't work out. Giving false hope that it might work out in the future when you're pretty certain it won't is both cruel and unfair. So be firm but compassionate when you let go. Not being firm may result in your ex's resorting to Herculean attempts to convince you that the relationship is worth saving. If you don't want to be bombarded with cards and gifts and emails, phone calls, text messages, and pleas, then be concise when you say goodbye. Well, that's just a few of my suggestions on how to leave your relationship. Dr. John Gray has a chapter in Mars and Venus starting over that says good endings make good beginnings. This is true and worth striving for. You won't ever be able to ensure that someone isn't hurt by your decision to leave, and there isn't really a good way to dump someone. But as I've said, there are certainly better ways than others. Thanks for watching. From SoYou'veBeenDumped.com, I'm Thea, saying see ya.